Welcome back guys, this is Jason, KM4ACK. Today we're going to take a look at a brand new way to build the Raspberry Pi. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Okay, so let me give you just a little bit of setup here. All I have done to this system is I flashed Buster to the micro SD card and then over the SSH connection for time's sake, I went ahead and ran the uh, update and upgrade commands. Now, you don't have to do that. The script is going to run those again, but just to shave a little bit of time off of this, I went ahead and did that prior to installing or starting the video rather. Uh, now, I have not done anything else. I am connected uh, over VNC and I am using a Cat5 connection. If you look up here, I haven't even uh, set the Wi-Fi country. I've done no localization uh, to this. We'll take care of that uh, towards the end. If you need to go ahead and configure Wi-Fi uh, now in order to get an internet connection, that's fine. I'll show you what to do during the install so that uh, those play nice together. All right, so that's it. Literally flash the card, boot it up, make sure you got an internet connection, and we're going to run one command. Okay, and hopefully uh, that's going to be big enough for you guys to see, but I will leave this command down in the description below. Uh, so all I'm going to do is paste this in rather than take the time to type it. Uh, again, this will be down in the description below, so once you uh, get your Pi up and uh, once you get the operating system up and running, you'll open terminal and run this one command. I'm going to hit return and then I'll fast forward the video and edit out the boring parts and just show you guys what you need to know. The first thing it will ask you is your call sign. So I'm going to give it my call sign and press return. Uh, and then it's going to just let you know that it's going to run some updates and some upgrades and it will present you with a pop-up window when uh, those updates are done. So just press any key to begin. Okay, and once the updates are complete, you're going to be presented with this little uh, pop-up window with all of the different applications that you can install uh, already checked. And you can scroll this list to see uh, the bottom. Now there is, I will leave a link to my GitHub site. There is a description for each of these apps uh, on my GitHub on the main page uh, for the Pi Build. So I'll leave a link to that down in the description below. Now a few things I have built in uh, per a request uh, from some of the beta testers was some things that um, just the Amron operators would use, uh, typically speaking, and I'm not going to install those right now. So I'm going to uncheck Pulse and GARAM, or GARAM, however you pronounce that, I'm not real sure. The other thing is, uh, down here, this has the options for both uh, Exaster and Yak. I'm going to leave them both checked for right now, but you probably uh, have a preference one or the other. And then the last option down here is not very descriptive, but EES is my emergency email server. Uh, that I wrote, I guess, a year, year and a half ago. So if you'd like to have that installed, you can leave it checked. Uh, it won't do any harm if you, you know, if you don't immediately think you will use something, you can go ahead and install it. It's just going to sit out there in the background and not do anything. But for today, I'm just going to uncheck Pulse and Garum and go ahead and click Install Selected Items. Okay, now if you chose to install the auto hotspot, this is the first uh, place that the script is going to pause and ask for some user input. If you didn't choose to install the auto hotspot, this will not appear. Uh, but right now it's asking uh, when you go to connect to the Pi when it's in hotspot mode, uh, then what password do you want to use? So I'm just going to use KM4ACK1234. Note that it does need to be at least eight characters long and no longer than 63. So I'll just go ahead and enter that there. It's going to ask me, is that correct? I'll say yes and hit return. Just a couple of seconds after 
Uh, it asks you for that. It's going to ask you for your Wi-Fi SSID uh, that you would like to connect to. Now this is the one that's currently in your shack. If you used the uh, GUI tool up here in the top right corner and have already connected to your Pi, uh, you can basically just bypass this. I'm not sure if you can actually enter uh, blanks here. You may can. Uh, but you can enter some gibberish if you've already uh, configured it through the GUI. If you haven't configured it through the GUI, you do need to go ahead and enter the current SSID um, to the wi to the Wi-Fi in your shack, and then it's going to ask for the password. So one that is already in my shack is that one. So we'll enter that, and the password for that is going to be KM4ACK1234. Again, it's going to ask you, is this correct? You'll simply choose yes uh, or no. If you choose no, it'll ask you to repeat the information. And guys, this script will take uh, somewhere between 30 minutes and an hour, depending on your internet connection, to do all of the updates, the upgrades, and then install everything. Um, some things are being built from source. Some things are currently being pulled from the repository. And you'll notice that it does give you some information on the screen as to what uh, the script is currently doing. Uh, but moving forward, we may build more things uh, from source instead of installing from the repository. But currently, some things like FLRig are so current in the repository, it just saves us some time uh, versus building from source. As, uh, the, as FLRig and FLDigi especially progress, and the repository becomes more and more outdated, we'll go ahead and build those from source in the future. Okay, now uh, this, uh, when you see this, this is for Pat Winlink. Uh, so if you didn't choose to install Pat Winlink, you will not see this. But again, it's going to ask for your call sign. Then it's going to ask for your Winlink password. And I'm just going to put password in for now. I'll have to go change that later, but that'll work for now. And then it's going to ask for your grid square. So I'll give it my grid square. It'll ask you, is everything correct? You say yes and carry on. Now, uh, you can probably walk away at this point uh, for 20 to 30 minutes, somewhere in there. Uh, the next thing that you're gonna have to interact with is if you chose to install Exaster, uh, Exaster is going to have a couple of uh, questions that has to be answered before it will complete. Everything else uh, will just install from the script and then the machine will reboot once everything is installed. Okay, so here's what you'll see as uh, Exaster tries to install. Uh, I'm just simply going to choose yes here and let that continue to run. Okay, so after your Pi reboots, let's go through how to configure this. Now, I'm not gonna worry about changing the default password, but uh, you do need to go through and take care of the localization preferences if you haven't already. Uh, so here under preferences and Raspberry Pi configuration, you'll want to come over to localization and set all of these. Uh, now I'm gonna skip that, but that is something you do need to take care of. Also up here, uh, you notice that I, it says no wireless interface is found. Well, during the setup, I intentionally uh, entered some bad information. Just in case you guys run into this, I can show you how to fix that real quick. I'm gonna open the terminal window and we're going to paste in this command. Now that's sudo nano forward slash etc forward slash WPA underscore supplicant forward slash WPA underscore supplicant dot C-O-N-F. And let's go ahead and hit return on that. And right here, what I did is I intentionally entered the wrong uh, SSID. So I'm going to look at my current system just because I can't remember how it's named. And I want it to be KM4ACK hyphen to mesh. So right here, let's make that hyphen to 
mesh. Let's make sure, did I get the capitalization right? Yes. Okay, so let's go ahead and press Control X, Y, and Enter to get out. And then I'm going to run one more command just to force the hotspot to check uh, and see if it can see a current uh, Wi-Fi connection. So I'll go ahead and paste this in. It's sudo space forward slash USR forward slash bin forward slash auto hotspot capital N. We'll go ahead and hit the return key and that'll go ahead and get our uh, Wi-Fi up and running. So you see it shut down the, high, uh, the hotspot and it's bringing up the Wi-Fi connection. Okay, and that'll finish up here in just a second, but up in the top right corner, now you see that we have the Wi-Fi signal, uh, where before we couldn't even uh, see that we had a wireless uh, interface card, we do have this. And then you can go ahead and click to set your country uh, so that you can see the uh, any available hotspots uh, that you might be near. So I'm going to go ahead and set this to the United States, say OK and now we have our Wi-Fi list. Okay, so let's go through a couple of other things here. First thing you want to do is you want to get FL Rig up and running. So I'm gonna choose FL Rig to open there and I'm going to configure this. Now guys, this has been built uh, with a Signalink or similar sound card that has Vox. If you're trying to use this with some other radio that doesn't use Vox, I'm probably not going to be a ton of help. Uh, maybe we can leave any questions down in the comments below and others that uh, have the same radio may can help out, uh, but I, it's going to be hard for me to help you if I don't own that particular rig. And the only rig that uh, I currently own is a Yezu 857. All right, so let's carry on with setting up FL rig. I'm going to come down and choose my 857. I'm going to choose my uh, cat control cable and I'm going to hit initialize. I hear my radio clicking and I can see that I'm on 7078 uh, digi. All right, now the next thing we need to do is we need to configure the rest of rig control. Uh, so I'm going to open um, the, the browser here and go into the PAT menu uh, directory. And then I'm going to right click on the config file and say text editor. All right, inside of the text editor, I'm coming down to where it says my call sign. We're going to enter CAM4ACK. Obviously, you'll enter your own. And I'm going to scroll down here to where it says rig control, and I'm going to change that to yes because I want to use rig control. Now, the way this is set up by default, uh, Pat Menu sends all of the commands to FL Rig. FL Rig forwards those on to the radio. That is this statement here, where it says Rig equals user local bin rig control hyphen m four. Uh, there is another example right up here above it. The pound sign in front of it indicates that it's commented out. Uh, but this is another way that you could uh, use Rig Control and send your commands direct to the radio instead of going through FL Rig. But I think, uh, especially if you're using a signal link, I think you'll find that you can leave everything set to default uh, other than changing your call sign up at the top and the rig control to equals yes. Now one other thing you might need to change is these commands here and that says which mode do we want to set the radio in when we're doing HF comms and which mode for 2 meter. I know for 2 meter here, I need PKT FM or packet FM. So I'm gonna make that quick change there. I'm gonna press Control S to save this file, and then I'm just going to close that down. Okay, now basically that's it for the base configuration. We are gonna go in just a second and configure JS8 call, uh, but I'm gonna open the PAT menu by double clicking the icon on the screen. And guys, if you haven't seen uh, the PAT menu, I'll leave a link to it right up at the top uh, but so that you can kind of get a feel for uh, how to configure it, what it can do, and things like that. But I'm going to choose Execute in Terminal, and that's going to open up uh, the PAT menu. Now I'm going to kind of minimize this or shrink this down a little bit so that you can watch right over here 
under radio tools as things come uh, get turned on and off using PAT. So I'm using the PAT menu manager to manage uh, which modems I'm running. So I can start the RDOT modem using option two or the packet modem using option three. So if we choose uh, the RDOT modem and go ahead and hit start, you'll see that rig control becomes active and RDOP becomes active. And then in just a second, here it goes, it's going to open up the PAT menu, uh, I'm sorry, the, uh, the browser directing you to the PAT mailbox. Now, I know that you probably cannot read this on the screen. I don't think I can even zoom in enough to it. But right now it says unable to get the rig frequency. This happens from time to time. The best thing to do is close this out. I'm actually going to close uh, FL rig as well. And inside of PAT menu, I'm going to hit stop the modems. I'm going to exit out of that. And now I'm just going to restart that. This only happens the first time and it's just the way that uh, everything gets synchronized up together. So I restarted FL rig and we'll go back into PAT menu and restart this again. We'll open RDOP one more time. And again, this is so small, you probably won't be able to read it. I'm having a hard time uh, myself, but it does tell me that the radio is ready uh, and has the correct dial frequency. So either reboot or close things down and reopen them to get that uh, everything synchronized on that. All right, so I'm going to close out of this. The exact same thing will work uh, if you go into packet mode. It's going to start Direwolf and AX25, and then you would be ready to make your two meter packet connection using Pat Winlink. So I've done all the configurations uh, for this setup, for the, for the signal link setup. I've done all the configurations for Direwolf for AX25 trying to make this as easy as possible for everyone. All right, I'm going to exit out of this and let's take a look at setting up JS8 call. So I'm gonna come over to ham radio and down to JS8 call. Once this opens up, I'm just going to quickly give it my call sign and my grid square. Oop, TV. Let's go over to radio for the rig. We're going to choose FL rig, FL rig. And what that's going to do is this JS8 call is now going to send all of its commands, uh, rig control commands to FL rig, and then FL rig is going to forward those out. So you can kind of see how I've tried to simplify this. Once I get FL rig configured for my radio, everything else should more or less fall in place. So now let's jump over to the audio tab under input plug HW card codec dev equals zero. And we should see something very similar under the output tab. Let's choose okay here and give that just a second. We should be able to see the waterfall coming. All right, and you can see that I'm starting to decode signals here. I'm gonna click the tune button, just make sure my PTT is working. And it is. Let's go ahead and send out a quick heartbeat. I'm going to have to enable the heartbeating network. And I'm going to right click and say send the heartbeat now. We'll give that just a second to transmit out and see if we get any responses. All right, the transmit cycle just finished uh, with my heartbeat going out. And you'll see several replies coming in right here. So that's kind of a basic setup for JS8 call. FT8 should work uh, virtually the same way. But you can see I did get a reply from four different stations. So I know that JS8 call is configured and working correctly. Now, one thing, I'm running uh, screen resolution, I believe 1920 by 1080. Uh, if you're running something that uh, is not quite that high resolution, you may end up with uh, Conky, which is this uh, over here on the right-hand side of the screen running off uh, at the bottom. There is no way that I'm aware of to be able to make that scrollable. Uh, so if you run into that, we may do a, uh, a video on that in the future to kind of show you how to go in and add and remove some of these things and shrink that up quite a bit so that uh, it would look better on a larger screen. All right, guys, I hope this one was helpful. 
Remember to leave your questions down in the comments below so we can all learn together. We will see you guys on the next video. Until then, 7-3.